If you have a car, make sure that the young lady over here is a car so that you will be able to speak. For the people, you got to be able to speak. 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 You got to be able to speak.
Did he? He got a promotion. Because they didn't get a promotion. So, number one, they want to get their next one goal of litigation. Number two, the next day of the third prior to my termination. What are you saying? I'm about to get him. I'm about to get him for that. And also, can I just say this? No. Can I just 
Yeah. So, yeah. there was, yeah. before we start, yeah. there was a process. Right. And the process was, fill out the comment card. Yeah. We're going to call you and okay. bring you to the microphone. Yeah. It's yeah. unfair yeah. to have somebody uh -oh. publish the microphone and not wait until you have your watch your comment card. So, you need to be able to call you and you'll call you to the microphone. Is that whoever is behind her? Let the process happen. Can we hear that? Yes. Thank you. Let's get the mic. Give us the mic. Yeah, it's over. They're they're answering. So step to the left. Come here. Come here. My name is Ivana Eager. That's who I'm going to call my name to my face. Last January number twelve, the CRB and the judges found seven officers to use excessive force during a house raid on November 4, 2002, that included my kid's father, who passed away three hours and eight minutes after I told him she was already. So my question to you is, actually it's not a question, it's a statement. You can go ahead and make all these force of policies as much as you want. Yeah. But until the employer handles down disciplinary actions from the recommendations, they don't right. mean nothing. Right. So we walk into Burger King and our sandwich is messed up. The employee is recommended because now we get a free meal. So my question to you is, when are you going to sit and pass down on them disciplinary recommendations? That's right. First time I've been crying. Nope. You guys just sit there and say whatever's written on the side and say, yo, read this shit to 
everybody come the hell down with me. And they can't sit there and take us all in at once. We'll make the national news and that's what? Syracuse and Walker. Because they're right. killing. All right, I need to go. So, she asked a question that I, that I think needs to respond. What are you talking about? He's doing the same thing again. Yes, yes, Somebody get him. I thought he was going to take him. All right, let him respond. Then, when we're going to start seeing this as it relates to the policy that we had, uh, I can tell you that a couple of things. Can you record right now? I'm about to get him. You? I'm about to get him. Yeah, you? Uh, uh, the, the problem with that is because of the law 50 days that we did a presentation on, with, with our uh, most recent use of force incident, those things that are not permissible for me to release them. But there are many files that come to my desk every day, some of which I was in the clear, some of which officers are visible. I do not and cannot go back and investigate old cases that happened prior to my arrival. That's against due process of the officers who already been investigated. Excuse me, Chief Buckner, how is it still old cases when I have a $12 million lawsuit against the police department for my child being assaulted? How is it? I don't care. So what? You let her talk for like 10 minutes. It don't matter how many times I get this mic. You're not listening to us at all. So tell me why I have a $12 million lawsuit against your police department and you can't go back and go and figure out what happened. I don't get it. So you said, you repeated the same thing once again. You went back in the past, you're here for the future, and, and, and whatever else is to come. You just repeated it again. We want to wait until the market opens. You don't want to do nothing. Y'all don't want to do nothing. Ain't nothing going to change. Y'all still going to keep saying the same old thing, and police still going to be doing the and same old shit out there. Can we please have a now with those persons that have come? I'm going to keep taking it. I don't really think. We're going to call them. We're going to call people up. No, no, we we're going to call people up. We're going to call people up. We're going to call people up.
Alexander Daniel. Gentlemen in the hat here. And Sir, if we can have a little bit of class so we can hear the right way, sir. If I remember correctly, sir, he gets his mic. Oh, yes, sir. I remember when his grandfather was the mayor of Syracuse. The city of Syracuse was no better off. Now, it's you.
uh, the officers have the right to appeal my decision on the discipline. Uh, so there is an appeal process for that for the greatest from the counseling of two terminations. Come to the mic. Yeah, come to the mic. I'm the You gotta get yours. You gotta get yours. You gotta wait. You gotta get yours. You gotta wait. They don't want to answer. Why didn't answer? You didn't answer a question.
We are taking all the questions, written or otherwise. If we don't know the answer, and can't, and I can't tell you is this in here today, but we can and can't share. But to the Chief's point, our goal is to be more transparent, to share as much information as possible, so we will share as much information as, as legally possible as it relates to the negotiation. If you leave your information, we can get back to you with a better answer than that. Hello, I have one question. Why did he just swerve you? He just got swerved. He just got swerved. Again, I will tell you that the information and priorities that we got in our negotiation. We believe our collective of the opinion. No, yes, they did. Literally. If you have a specific priorities, if you were negotiated in the contract, you share that information with us, and we will take it into consideration. in the paperwork that you gave us today that a police officer can non-verbally de-escalate a situation just whoop your ass just whoop your ass not words de-escalate a beat down yes quick beat down part of that non-verbally escalation would be taking the time to step back and talk some more to talk part of that would be the caution you got to he can tell you like look at his face part of that is a culture goofy ass that is respectful to him
good action. They could have made sure they could they could have you know, done it well for the truck, but they didn't have to shoot her. Uh, but let's go back to 2011. Sir, the mic the mic was not when Gary Porter, age 41, was shot and killed, shot in the back, right near the infamous skinny car. The officer she was commended to age 22 and recommended by District Attorney William Fitzpatrick from now. And she was given an honorary as the officer of the year for having shot this man in the back. And they claim he had a gun. Then, then we would come on up to Dwayne, Dwayne Watson. 74 years old. Came out on his porch and they said that he had a gun. The official report by Chief Duck the first was, was that he appeared to have a gun. Then after he was shot, it, it was the story changed and then he, he had a gun. Now the, the word is out that the police were called not for him, but for the neighbor across the street. I don't understand that. I don't understand why they would shoot us. Man, 74 years old, well renowned. This is a national epidemic, but it doesn't need to continue. Now, now in, in, in this case, the district attorney just not referred to the state attorney general. And of course, it would probably come out and commend the office for doing that too. <laughs> My question was, when is this going to stop? When is this going to stop? They, 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 they always justify, justify the officer's behavior, but they don't take any concern about the victim. Thank you. Oh, sorry. My name is Randall my question is, if a person is filled with police misconduct with their phone and they're not obstructing justice up in the hot face across the street, why is Sheriff the Police Department sending the officer to go and treat that phone? That's our question. We're trying to prove that it's misconduct from across the street, and I don't want to admit this in the obstructive justice. Why are they taking the phone? And then why are they taking the That's a good question. I don't believe that the Syracuse Police Department uh, justified that it's in the civilian street that predated me, and I believe that that case was investigated.
I didn't have no warrant. Came in, came in, he looked at my belongings. He said there was no missed call from my girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend, there was a missed call from my ex-girlfriend. I don't even know why he was looking in my phone when there was no warrant in the first place. And now my daughter has been, been separated from me since September. And I've been asking the chief for a CPS report. I still haven't got the CPS report for my daughter. Where's my daughter at? And why was the police officer in my house? I even, Let go. I, I, I even talked to, uh, to, the, to, the, to the Department of Law. I put in a request for a full request. It's, uh, why was the police officer in my house? No one has not answered that question yet. If, if we have an answer again, I apologize for that. If we make sure that you have your, we have your contact information, we will give you an answer. I, I don't know where the law is. She's there with the bullets. She allowed the bullets. She allowed the bullets on to me. I actually told you that today. Nigga, oh, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with this. Yeah, I left her with my mother. So you have a message for me if you reached out to me. Oh, uh, and I'm the one that you have a complaint file. So you can be something to me and they will submit it to that. I put it. I put it to you if you receive your message and we have your investigation. I talked to your mother today. But you left the mother who thought that was your mother. No, I don't. No, no, no. I purposely, I purposely left my mother number. Yeah, because when I left my number, you never got back in touch with me. So I'm going to call you, a lady that hired herself as her mother. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, I've been put the claim with the complaint of the Citizen Review Board. You talk about internal affairs, you can't even talk about internal affairs. I came to get my investigation. 2017, a man came and attacked me, a home invasion. They said that the chief of police would be in touch with me in 45 days. The chief didn't get back in touch with me. They came back and did another home invasion in my house. They caught the guy and he didn't arrest him. They let the, they let the woman that, that, that drove the guy leave on my property. They leave on my property that I paid for. The police officer asked me, Mr. Bullock, how did you get this house? I showed him my lease. They come back a couple weeks later and arrest me and get me out of my house. I'm out of my house because I was arrested without no warrant. And I don't have no charge. I've never been convicted of a felony. I've never been convicted of a misdemeanor. I don't have no charges present. They gave me seven charges last year and I beat every charge. I want to know why the police is going around harassing me, making charges up on me, because we have to back it down to 2017. They tell me I can't even talk to you, Mayor. I've been coming, I've been coming trying to talk to you. He's, she said I can't talk to you. Helen Hudson, the wheel. Helen yeah. Hudson, Helen yeah. Hudson said I can't tell talk it. to you. Yeah. They said because I got a notice of a claim against the city, the common council won't even talk to me. No one will talk to me. With why? That, the police came in my house and arrested me. I did 38 days in jail. Why did I do 38 days in jail? Without a warrant. And the same police officer is dating my ex girlfriend. Uh, I don't hear you. You can talk to me. I hear you. The chief is probably back up with you. I told everybody in the administration about this. Everyone know you're the only person I haven't been able to tell this information to. Uh, I'm here and I hear you. See this now? I'm ahead. They broke my hand twice. They broke my nose. I went in the, I went in the machine. They said I had a concussion at the time and my hand was broke and my nose was broke. Shame on him. Police they didn't even give me a charge. Lionel Johnson happened to be my saver. He was a cab driver. He was going to give up a cab here at the bus station. He came through there. And while the police was stopping me and picked me up at the end of the day, at the police bus not only, not only did they, I jumped in the car with him, they followed, they followed him. They tried to intimidate him to put me on the car. Lionel Johnson worked for the city taxi. And he saved my life. Thank you, sir. There are several individuals in the back that have yet to speak. If you want to bring the way sir, with the glasses. Here we go. You know what? Here's the thing. Absolutely. Here we go. So you know what I've heard time and time again? Is your use of force policy documents talking about reasonableness of your officers. I've listened to multiple people behind me talk about white supremacists, racist actions against people in the community that they live in. And so we don't trust your understanding of reasonableness. We don't think 
I don't know. Get charged. Don't catch no charges in the water. Black body. Yeah. And
Alright, I guess he wants the rebuttal. Change our situation. 
situations, de-escalation, all that de-escalation. Man, y'all think Charlotte Moore was something? Y'all think Charlotte Moore is so many south side, east side, west side, north side. They don't do that shit in Maddie, they don't do that shit in Clay, but they pull us out on the car. I'm sorry. I'm they don't do it in millions. They don't do it in millions. They don't pull you out your kids out the car. They don't put your they don't pull your kids down and debate you on front street. I'm a big boy. Yes. I'm tired of it, man. And you know what's so crazy? Nobody is doing nothing about it. You hear about the crazy, the crazy, but nobody is doing nothing about it. But they they are promoting these officers. Yeah. They are giving these officers more power. Mr. Butler, man, I, I respect you just for whenever you came through the door, how you were speaking, and you said it. It's some riot officers here, right? But look how they treat you. They're excessive. They're going crazy right now. That's right. I want the attorney general to come check out my investigation too. And I got a whole bunch of other people in this city. They do whatever they want. Y'all can say what y'all want, but I violated that fourth amendment. When do you ever have to get out the car for a traffic infraction if you got your license registration and you're not doing nothing? So if somebody robbing the bank over there, I'm a carnival for me over here. I'm part of robbing that bank. Nah, nah, it's crazy. Y'all do what y'all want to do. Not, not you per se. Y'all got a job to do, man. I, I, I haven't heard from y'all. I'm frustrated. Y'all like y'all saying, oh, he, he made some mistakes in his life. I'm tired of talk, y'all talking about my past where I was exonerated and I had big charges because I speak about my past. Like that's that's the truth. I got a car ticket for me. I got to go to the grand jury. What the Frank Fowler says, Mr. Fowler, you think I get my own um, car back? My, my, my fine is 2500 They want me to pay it. I was ex exonerated. He said, sue me. Yeah. And if you go back to the city hall meeting, he was out front when I was trying to put my first lawsuit in. He said they got the most powerful legal team. And we haven't lost the case yet. How intimidating is that? Y'all got the biggest game in the city. That's a fact. Pardon? Oh, oh, oh. So, oh, I don't get no response, no rebut, no, I don't get no feedback. Shame on you. I don't get nothing. Y'all just gonna, is y'all gonna get in touch with me? Am I gonna be safe? If you leave your, if you leave your information, Yes. Go ahead, man. Sorry. All right, so, um, I got two questions. The first one is, is there actually, is there a policy that these officers, service records can be raised yearly? So that there's no accountability as to what actions that they've taken, um, whether they shot somebody, they beat somebody up, are there police records to be raised and in for a start of Put so that in right now. So if that's not the case, then my question becomes, how come there hasn't been any ability to track the things that's happening to the community? As you sit here and you listen to all of the stories, the police names have to be very current in the public's eye before we're getting these stories. So why is that there's no um, track record to be able to track what police officers are doing to people? Also, when I work with the city of Syracuse School District, there's some of the officers that are, are still within the school districts moving from one building to another, harassing and harming our children, and then once they and they see them out in the public and they do the same exact thing. Why is there no way to actually track who's doing what and to get them away from our children and away from the communities if they're going to continue to be harmful? Well, as, as I said earlier, when somebody asked about the, the range of discipline, uh, an officer's history is a part of what's considered a uh, an officer is discipline. So there is no erasure of an officer's history that's actually a part of the evaluation before we render discipline is the actual history of the officer. And that continues throughout the years, it's not just for that one year, it continues. So there's no break in their actual history. It's so it's they're it's in the course of 10 years. It's within a reasonable range, we're not going to have something that happened in 1989 for an officer to use against him for an infraction today. It's just still a history of the science. Is there a way of tracking those who are within our community who have consistently been harming folks yeah. at this point to actually do something about that with this new policy, the new game all this month? Is there a way of actually tracking what's happening? What's happening? There is a way that we are able to internally track that. No, if you're asking if that's exposed to the officer's discipline, if it's exposed to the public, the answer is no. But 
but the state law that prohibits uh, the school that the officer is pushing on the We have a question for Ms. Anderson. Be understood. So,
Why you ain't respond? Start running up on people. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Liz, Lisa and tomorrow. I'm good, thanks. How are you? Mm -hmm. So, that, why are you talking about the stage? I was like, oh, of course. <laughs> strategic. You gotta be strategic. Exactly. You gotta be strategic. Oh, yeah. That was good. Yeah, but that was good. What, what, that, that was the that was first. Then after that, you got that tennis player. Strategic. We're going to do this again. They're going to be prepared. Like, okay, let's go to school. No, like this. Let's go. Let's go to school again. Next time, they're going to be lined up around the building. They want no parsley. They don't like it. I said, what time? I said, what time do I? She said, you already been on the news. I'm like, what? We'll be on at 10 to 11. We'll push you on at 5. We'll be on at 10 to 5.